creatine, everything you wanted to know. We're gonna bust some myths. 12 myths we're actually gonna bust. Dr. Paul Zalzo. Dr. Brad Winning, welcome to Talking With Docs. This is Talking With Docs, and we're gonna talk about creatine. Creatine, a little C4H9N3O2. Okay, you don't have to go all breaking bad on me there, Walter. I, I, I think you're Jesse Pinkman. <laughs> oh, it's an organic compound. Yep. Normally you get it from meat, or supplements. Right, and actually this is a very big business. They estimate currently about $300 million a year and expected to go to about half a billion dollars before the end of the decade. Okay, so what do you think, viewer? At the end of this, are we gonna say it's okay to take or it's not okay to take? Stay tuned and find out. Okay, so there's a lot of myths about creatine and unfortunately on YouTube, you do play a doctor on YouTube. I play a doctor on YouTube. But there are a lot of people that say a lot of crazy stuff and we're gonna to try to use some scientific evidence and some research papers that we've read to tell you what's true, what's not true. Here's the skinny on creatine. Okay, so the first thing the is, does it cause water retention? Okay, so initially it does cause some water retention and that's why a lot of people, when they first start taking it, they'll gain weight. And a lot of younger teenage boys or athletic people want to gain a little bit of weight at first. So it does initially cause a little bit of weight gain and water retention, um, but long-term total body water does not change with creatine. So, Good studies to show that. Right, you're not gonna be bloated when you're running your 100 meters. You're definitely not. Okay, the other myth is, well, I don't want to take it because it's an anabolic steroid. It is not an anabolic steroid. It's completely a different compound than an anabolic steroid. Anabolic steroids are like synthetic versions of testosterone. Right. Creatine is not that. And as Canadians, we know this very well, because in 1998, I remember the exact place I was in when Ben Johnson won so the 100 I. meter race against Carl Lewis. And I remember the picture on the front of Sports Illustrated. It showed how big his shoulders were compared to all the other sprinters, particularly Carl Lewis. And as it turns out, he was taking anabolic steroids, and maybe they all were, but he got caught. He got don't take steroids. That's our first take home message. All you people trying to get stronger, bigger, faster, don't take steroids. They are so no. dangerous for you. That'll be another video. Yes. Creatine, next one, uh, next myth is it causes kidney damage. Does it cause kidney damage? It does not, and this all started from a case study in 1998 where there was a young man who took a whole bunch of creatine, very large doses for a long period of time. He had some other medical conditions, he ended up with kidney failure, and then it propagated this myth that creatine was dangerous. Other studies have gone on to show that it is not dangerous. It is broken down to creatinin, which is something that shows up in your urine, particularly when you have kidney dysfunction, but also if you exercise a lot or if you eat a lot of meat. And creatinine, you've heard it before because you probably had a blood test for that. Yes. Because it is how we measure kidney function, creatinine right. clearance. Okay, number four. Uh, uh, just before we leave oh. the, the kidney damage, sure. any treatment, medication, supplement, anything, if you take too much of it, it can cause damage. So right. always try and stay within the recommended doses of things. Don't overdo it, okay? And because it may be different depending on your age, your gender, your other medical history for all the supplements or other things you're taking. And biologic sex, not gender. Now, the other one is creatine. Is that why you're bald? Is that why you hear bald? You don't have to get so personal. Yeah, it does not cause baldness. So a male pattern baldness is caused by something called DHT, which is a breakdown product of testosterone. Multiple studies have shown that creatine does, has no effect on this. All this time, I thought that's why I looked like a bald version of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it wasn't the creatine. That's right. Okay, dehydration is the next one. Right, so before we're like, well, is it causing water retention? Now it's causing dehydration. The thought is because it's an osmotically active compound living inside the skeletal muscles, so it pulls a bunch of uh, fluid into your muscles and causes dehydration. This is simply not true. No, you can't push and pull at the same time, right? You can't. Water retention, dehydration, forget it. Look at your mind. What about the adolescent, younger person, pediatric population? It's dangerous for kids to take creatinine? So, no, so, so they've actually done a lot of studies including things like uh, traumatic brain injuries, spina bifida, muscular dystrophy, and lupus, and they've shown in this population that it certainly is very safe. They've not done a lot of RCTs in kids exercising or young teenagers exercising, but yes, it is thought to be safe. No studies at all really on toddlers or babies. The next one is people think that it increases fat mass. Simply not true. It does not increase fat mass. Your fat mass will be increased by the donuts, the Twinkies, the junk food you eat, but not the creatine. No one wants to blame the food. That's it. Okay, number six is, is a loading dose required? Okay. So, the answer to this is maybe. So if you're trying to get big and get strong really quickly, a loading dose may be beneficial, but long-term it is not mandatory. You can take the standard dose over a longer period of time, you'll get the same benefit. Okay, the next myth is that it's only good for men, males. Males are the only ones who can benefit from it. 100% not true. This works for 
for everybody. Um, and lots of studies have shown this. Male, female, doesn't matter how you identify, creatine biologically can help you. No studies for pregnant women, so that's probably an area where if you were gonna continue taking it or you're already taking it, maybe discuss this with your doctor because there are potentially safety issues there. Super careful if you're pregnant yeah. taking any medication or any supplement. Always clear that with your healthcare provider, your OB, GYN, or someone because pregnancy is a whole different physiologic situation. Got it. Anything else? Yes, two more. Okay. Am I too old for it to work or does it only work in younger people? And the resounding answer is? It's okay to use at any age. In fact, this might even be more beneficial as you're older because as we age, we start to lose muscle mass. Yes. That's just a natural process called sarcopenia. And it happens to everyone once they get over 40 or 50, they just start to lose muscle mass. So this in conjunction with exercise might help reduce the effects of muscle mass loss. And there are actually a lot of studies, the very exciting part of the creatine research, and this is why we've talked about in other videos saying, you know, maybe the, the aerobic, the long distance running and the heavy duty cycling are not necessarily the best way to get strong. Resistance training is a critical part to reduce your risk of falls and improve your daily functioning activities. Is it only good for resistance training? No, well, that's one of the other myths. So, so no, it's actually good for both resistance as well as endurance training because of the way that it's held inside and increases your ability to form glycogen and have ready energy stores. Okay, and the best form of creatine, if you're thinking of taking it, is the monohydrate form. It's the most inexpensive yep. and most easiest to ingest. None of them are super water soluble, nope. uh, so they don't always mix well in a drink, but monohydrate is definitely the probably the best form to take. Yeah. So that's the skinny on creatine. And right. so at the end of the day, do you suggest taking it? So I think if you're looking for a performance edge and you don't want to do something that's illegal, as long as you're exercising regularly, I think it does have benefit. I have, I have you know, trialed it a little bit myself. Yeah. And initially I did gain actually like almost five pounds. Oh, you tried it? Yeah, I have tried it before. Oh, wow. Yeah, like when, if you're working out regularly and you're taking it, certainly you can see improvement in strength and endurance. Um, mm -hmm. It may say that's an N of one, but yeah, lots of studies have shown this. Okay, so I mean, often we we give a talk here and we discuss a different supplement or vitamin or energy drink, and at the end of it, we're, probably, we're often saying, you know, don't do this. Yeah, it's probably not going to help. Creatine, on the other hand, maybe of some benefit. Look into it, and as always, talk to your healthcare professional before you start taking something new. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, let us know what you've experienced with creatine. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.